another late one um, and if I sound a bit muffled it's because a cat is lying on my throat um, but I wanted to I wanted to get the um, the video today for the video for today in and the problem is that the genre I want to get into is not entirely like um, like blade punk it's not entirely well defined mostly it just ends up being a bit of a mashup but I feel that it has a lot of potential, a lot of untapped potential, perhaps. And I feel that it deserves a mention, even if there is not as much unique meat on the bones yet as there is on other genres. <laughs> Another problem with the genre is that it's basically two genres that are very closely aligned. They have a lot of similarities, um, but depending on how they are executed, they can usually fall into one or the other category, which is why this one has essentially two names. The cat is sticking its claw in, claws in. Mm. They do that when they sleep. Ow! Um, the one version that is usually called Gunpowder Fantasy is, at first glance, what it says on the tin, it's Fantasy in the Age of Gunpowder. Gunpowder has been invented, uh, meaning uh, primitive handguns like flintlock pistols and uh, smoothbore rifles. But they are still in a world of magic and fantasy creatures. So you have elves using handguns and dwarves building cannons and the like um, and as such it can be a perfectly uh, viable genre uh, just a another historical setting than the middle ages to use for fantasy one extremely good example of this is the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, Pirates of the Caribbean, depending on how you pronounce it, which has the age of sail and piracy, um, with, of course, handguns and cannons, and whatever else belongs in that era. But definitely magical elements, not so much magic in the sense of spellcasting, but ghosts and how the hell do you describe Davy Jones's crew? <laughs> magical mutants, I don't know. Uh, definitely, definitely magical creatures. And it only scrapes the surface of what is possible uh, with that kind of genre. You can have magic that is this weird mix of, of low fantasy, high magic, uh, where there is clearly powerful magic as people are brought back from the dead and and kept um, kept alive through magic in, in twisted forms, but it's but it's on the fringes of society. It's not 
it's not built into society. Ow, claws. Um, so there's that, but you can also expand it with having actual magic users involved, either as secondary or, or tertiary characters to keep it keep it a bit exotic um, consulting magical oracles and and sages and the like druids or whatever have you or you can have it right into the the main or major secondary characters that are actively using spells or magical artifacts on a fairly daily level. But Gunpowder Fantasy actually has one major element to it that is what draws at least my interest a lot. And that is the notion of gunpowder versus magic. Historically, gunpowder was, even though it wasn't the fast revolution in technology that it's often portrayed as, it was a revolution. And things changed in many ways. Warfare changed and... As a consequence of that, society and the way things worked changed a lot. If magic has had the the lay of the land, if magic has had, if magic has been been carrying the crown as as the major power for a long time, the arrival of gunpowder can threaten that. Which means that although gunpowder and magic might have some very interesting ways of crossing into each other with gunpowder used as magic and, and magic used in gunpowder, you, you can have magical cannons, magical handguns, and the like. Um, there is also the idea that on a social level, Magic and gunpowder are enemies because in the end one will probably end uh, end up being the power technology of choice. And gunpowder is more accessible, at least, if we go by historical means of production and assume that magic is something that needs a lot of training and is is mostly relegated to the person who trains it. Not everybody can be a, a wizard, but everybody can fire a handgun. So there is a deep advantage to gunpowder, which makes it a very powerful rival to magic and the interaction with magical creatures is possibly even more complex um, gunpowder can be to magical creatures as it is to humans a, a way of killing things but it can also have properties that are at odds with, with magical creatures even the presence of gunpowder might be horrifying to them for magical reasons and this whole magic versus gunpowder can provide some interesting twists on the usual fantasy concepts it provides powerful factions to go against ma magical guilds. You can have gunpowder guilds or gunpowder smiths or whatever, uh, or simply kings or trade houses using gunpowder to a great degree. Perhaps 
just supplanting magic, but because it's easier to to utilize on a grand scale, or actually as a an active enemy against magic users that one tries to exterminate the other, one tries to take it take its place. And because the genre is not quite as defined as many others, it's hard to say what typical stories would play out in it. Um, but on the other hand, it means it's it's just open for a lot of stories that can be drawn from both the fantasy and the swashbuckling genres um swashbuckling being the genre of pirate movies or the musketeers or things like that basically blending those two genres together and in some ways it becomes a an early version of urban fantasy in that maybe not urban but and definitely not modern but non magical civilized society is is growing and magic has to find its place in it whether that be through integration or hiding or fighting back and the gunpowder just becomes a symbol of that struggle of of that pressure that magic comes under. Um, the other version that I mentioned at the beginning is if gunpowder is taken to the extremes much in the way that non-magical gear was in Blade Punk, then you end up with what I have chosen to call cannon punk, uh, where you have crazy hand cannons, crazy uh, um, armed units using gunpowder in creative ways. And the profound change that produces in, in, in society, be, society becoming essentially more violent because you don't need to face something, someone down with a sword or a dagger when you can just fire a bullet at them from 50 paces. And a lot of the flavor of cannon punk would likely come from the clunkiness of um, this technology in that handguns may be very violent, very, very powerful, but they're probably not as easy to use as guns in, in a more modern setting. Many may be one or two users. Ow, claws! Ow! Ow! Ay! The cat just dug in. Ow! Oh, that hurt. Sorry for yelling. Cat dug in the claws and it hurt like hell. Ow. I think I'm bleeding. Jesus, I'm bleeding. It's not much, but I'm bleeding. Uh, ow. So... Cannon Punk focuses more on the actual use of the gunpowder more than uh, ow, more than the opposition to magic. But the two are very closely aligned in that they they are about the arrival of gunpowder technology turning everything on its head. Uh, the question is just, is it only social turmoil? Um, 
social technology to, to social technological turmoil or is it in opposition to the old power of magic if there is no magic or at least no magic that is of great importance then you're leaning into either just historical or canon punk genres if magic is Ow, it still hurts. If magic is uh, present enough to be of of note, then you're leaning into gunpowder fantasy. But they are both meant, or can at least both be imagined as a study might be a bit arrogant but as a as an experiment in how social turmoil comes about from a single invention the question is just what kind of society is thrown into that turmoil 